It's the Daily Dog. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. Hey, y'all, welcome back to the Daily Dog. I am thankful that you are hanging out with me today on a Wednesday. It is the Wednesday of Thanksgiving week here in America, and we are making this Wednesday like our normal Friday episodes. On Fridays, we dive into longer pieces and do a little bit of an extended play listen. And today, we are going to Carn Evil 9 by ELP. Uh, so uh, many people have been suggesting this song uh, over the last several months, and I am happy to be diving into it today. The uh, the lyrics that I said there at the beginning, welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends, is from the first impression part two of this. And that part I know, but the rest of the piece I am relatively unfamiliar with. So I am uh, excited to be diving into this one today with all of you. Carn Evil 9 is from ELP's 1973 album, Brain Salad Surgery, their fourth album. It was released this month, 48 years ago. Uh, previously on the channel, we have listened to Tarkus uh, by ELP. That was from 1971. So this is a few years later. Uh, the, the piece is written by Keith Emerson and Greg Lake with uh, former King Crimson lyricist Peter Sinfield. Uh, so the musicians that we'll be hearing today are Keith Emerson. He plays all the keyboards <laughs> and the synthesizers. And uh, Greg Lake is on vocals, uh, the bass and guitars. And Carl Palmer is on drums and percussion. So uh, Carn Evil 9 is sort of this adapted uh, respelling of the word carnival. And uh, I wanted to be sure that I knew uh, the etymology and the meaning of carnival. So carnival is a period of revelry or a specific event of celebration, a circus, or an amusement show. Uh, but the thing I found interesting is that the root of the word uh, carn or carna, right, is meaning uh, of the flesh or like meat, right, of us and or to, um, you know, entertain us with with revelry of the flesh right so uh we're going to listen to this y'all in four parts i have a playlist here i've got um the they call movements in this impressions so this is 30 minutes long so strap in y'all uh we've got uh the first impression part one first impression part two and then we'll listen to uh, the second impression and the third impression. So I have these set so that between each of these sections, the music will pause so that I can make sure that uh, I'm hanging in with it and and uh, can, can say what we need to without interrupting the flow of the music in these uh, little sections. So I want to dive into it, y'all. Let's, let's not waste any time. We are going to listen to the 2014 remastered studio version of this piece. So let's dive in. Here is Emerson, Lake, and Palmer with their Carn Evil 9 uh, Part 1. Here we go. Interesting organ. Sounds contrapuntal at the beginning. Whoa. Whoa. The low piano in this ear. And the interesting percussion in this ear. Greg Lake coming through. was like a diminished chord for a second, an arpeggio of a diminished chord. They're moving all over the place. Woo! I think they keep coming back to A-flat, though.
Boy, Keith Emerson's one of a kind, isn't he? Coming back to A flat. There's that. There's that diminished chord. It's gonna be impossible to follow Keith Emerson's harmonic progressions, y'all. So this first impression, part one, begins with the story of a bleak uh, world. Cold and misty morning, I heard a warning born in the air about an age of power where no one had an hour to spare. Where the seeds have withered, silent children shivered in the cold, now their faces captured in the lenses of the jackals for gold. Same progression, but it went to a different key, almost like a sequence. Whoa! There's another, that same diminished. It gets back to where they were. Up a half step. they came from, up a fourth, back down, yeah, this is so interesting, and listen to the, I know, I mean, Keith's playing is unbelievable, right, but listen to the drums back there, y'all, Palmer's just ripping it up. Do this live. How can Keith play all that stuff live? So this is a warning. This first impression is a warning to humanity. There must be someone who can set them free to take their sorrow from this odyssey. To help the helpless and the refugee, to protect of what's left of humanity. Now we've got an amazing show. You want to see what happened? Here's the show, right? Huh, roll up. I think that's a British saying. Like, gather round, ye friends. Drums, there's so much going on in this. If you follow me, there's a speciality. Some tears for you to see. Misery, misery, roll up. See the show, y'all. Human suffering for all to view. It's amazing. Next up on the bill, in a house up on the bill, we must strip her in a till. What a thrill, what a thrill. Not content with that, with our hands behind our backs, pull Jesus from 
for all of the crazy chromatics and chord progressions that we've been hearing, he keeps coming back to A flat. Ready to see the show, y'all. Up a step. impression part one and like I said it's gonna stop for a second before it rolls into part two that's cool series of descending thirds um, half steps going down Okay. Oh, I think we're going to get to see the show in just a second, y'all. But wow, the, uh, <clears throat> there's so much <laughs> in this. Oh, me. So I, th I think they have uh, uh, hyped the show enough, even though there's misery and there's uh, a lot of uh, bad stuff to see. Uh, I still want to see what they're going to say. So uh, here is uh, First Impression Part 2. Here we go. As it continues. And this is Welcome back, my friends, to the show that the famous ends. part. We're so glad you right? could come inside, come inside. Or the most there famous part glass, of all this. And it's amazing. I gotta stop. Because because it says, welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. We're so glad you could attend. Come inside, come inside. So they're inviting people into the carnival here, to the show. There behind a glass stands a real blade of grass. Be careful as you pass. Move along, move along. So even something as ubiquitous and normal in our reality as a single blade of grass is seen as something rare uh, in this reality to be, um, to be reveled about so let's keep going <laughs> you got to see this show y'all it's guaranteed to blow your head apart you're staying in the same key that's still an a flat up a step to b flat Bass pedals, listen to that. Back on the mouth, but out loud. Whoa! Go, self Keith.
five, one. He goes all these crazy places with these different chords, but then ends up not modulating. Here's that third. Down another third. Down another third. Interesting. Okay, down a step, half step, half step. You know, so these reusing parts of this, which is good for a piece this long. Big five chord to a one chord there. Soon the gypsy queen in a glaze of Vaseline will perform on guillotine. What a scene, what a scene. Next up on the side, will you please extend a hand to Alexander's right time back. Dixie line, Dixie line. It's like the, it's like the, the rhythm or the tempo is getting just a little bit faster too. It's like it's gaining intensity as they go along. Performing on a stool, leave a sight to make you drool. Seven virgins and a mule. You should have called me in to double for Carl. There's that same like diminished chord. Amazing. Absolutely incredible. So much fun. Uh, and I am recording as the, the trash uh, people are making sounds outside, so don't adjust your sets, y'all. I'm going to keep right on rolling because I'm into it now, so... Hope that that doesn't mess things up too much. I read before we move on that um, that in the original uh, record that the first impression part one was on the first side of the album, and this first impression part two, come see the show, is on the second half of the album. So literally, you would have to take the needle off flip the album, put the needle back on, and then Greg Lake says, welcome back, my friends. That's that's kind of cool how that happens. But let us move ahead, y'all. This is uh, the second impression. So let's see what this one sounds like. Here we go. Drums. Ooh, piano. I read this one is an instrumental. sit back and try to follow along. Reminds me of like the Vince Guaraldi trio. You know, it's like Charlie Brown grew up and now he runs a hedge fund or something. <laughs> y'all. How are they getting that sound? Is 
it sounds like they're playing a regular like acoustic piano, but it sounds like electrified in some way, distorted in some way. Now it's a video game. When I hear this, I get the feeling of a party, like people just engaging in the carnival atmosphere, sort of in blissful ignorance of the warnings that they're you know, trying to convey to them. It reminds me a little bit of of um okay. I was gonna say of Leonard Bernstein some of his writing. And then the first real breakdown of intensity that we've had in the entire piece so far. I love all these sounds. The piano is a wonderful instrument. I mean, you can get the regular sounds out of it, but you've got that entire box full of strings that you can, you know, do other things with to make sound besides just hitting the keys. TikTok in the background. It's like your impending societal doom, my friends. Heed our warning. It also is a really interesting choice with all of the organ heavy stuff in the first impression to go to piano for pretty much all of this one. It kind of takes us out of that carnival atmosphere and it's like providing commentary or context upon that other main sound. thirds again. Tritone toggle in there. I gotta do more of a deep dive into Keith Emerson so I can see what made this guy tick. His music is fascinating.
There's some more of those fourths that Keith likes so much. I can't, there's no way to tell where he's going harmonically because he never stays anywhere long enough to set up shop and show you where he is. And that's gonna end it, it's gonna finish. Yeah. <laughs> okay, y'all, it is time. I, I need to go right into this. This is the third impression, uh, the third and final. Let's see how this finishes out. Here we go. Okay, back to the organ stuff. I read that this continues the story begun in the first impression, and now it's going to be describing sort of the clash or conflict between uh, humans and the computers that we have created. And I believe this is the section that Peter Sinfield uh, assisted with in the lyrics. Fear that rattles in men's ears and rears its hideous head, dread death in the wind. Back in A flat. It's the same place they were in the first impression. Walls that no man thought would fall. The altars of the just crushed. Dust in the wind. So they're asking. Why are the computers no fighting back? Man flowers in my ship. No man yields who flies in my ship. Danger, danger, danger. Let the bridge computer speak. Here is Superman. <laughs> Stranger, Stranger. Stranger. I think the danger in Stranger is the computer talking. Load your program. I am yourself. It's the computer talking back. I can't do that, Dave. No computer stands in my way, only blood can cancel my pain. Wow. Guardians of a nuclear dawn, let the maps of war be drawn. It's more like an anthem here. And then not. <laughs> Five chord. Back to one. And there's still an A flat. For as much of a conflict as they're talking about, the music itself, to me, doesn't reflect the intensity of that conflict. Just my impression. There's less dissonance in it and less rhythmic um, chaos than I would have expected.
They've got a little bit of time left, so they may get there. We pause this conflict for an organ solo. <laughs> Why? Because we can, and we have the organ here. Let's play it, y'all. All over a static chord. Okay, and they stay there. I'm not sure where they are though. It all <laughs> it all goes it all kind of washes together. is next level, right? I mean, all of Keith's playing and, and Greg's singing and everything, but y'all, the drums are so unique and just well done. Big triplets. Pop, 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 beep, pop, pop, right? There's the conflict. That's a really impressive sound. That's really cool. What else could you do to do what was right? I'm perfect. Are you? Is that how it's going to end? Why? Are the computer's finally taking over. of transmission. <laughs> and that's hmm. and that's how the uh, the entire um, album concludes. 
It's like, I hope the boys made it out okay. I was like, Keith, are you okay? <laughs> what a fascinating piece of music, y'all. I had read that uh, that Greg Lake and, P and Peter Sinfield had uh, combined to work on the lyrics of this last section. And <clears throat> they had written, as I recall, they had written Schizoid Man together uh, for King Crimson a few years earlier. So they had been sort of tuned into this sort of societal warning, societal prophecy uh, of, of uh, repercussions for our uh, misplaced priorities for some time. I am enthralled by this, y'all. Um, it's, it's much more, uh, it, well, it's good to get the context of the welcome back my friends to the show that never ends because I never understood uh, what piece that was from that it was part of a um, a warning or a putting on of a show to put our collective societal failures uh, on display for everyone to see. I never got that part. I just was uh, ignorant to that and always thought it was, hey, the show's about to start. Woohoo, right? So I am one of the ignorant people that never went uh, bothered to read into it and figure out what was actually going on. And I'm glad that I have done that now. This makes uh, really fascinating sense. And I think it's uh, effective. It's an effective piece of music, y'all. There are pieces of classical music that are 30 minutes long that don't have near this level of sophistication, of form, of rhetoric, of clarity, of communication. Um, I very much enjoyed this listen. And I hope that you did as well. Carn Evil 9 by Lim uh, Limerson, Emerson Lake and Palmer celebrating its 48th anniversary this month. It was released in 1973. Um, this, was been, this has been fun. Um, I really, really enjoyed it. I hope that you did as well. Thank you all for being with me this week. We're going to take a few days off for the Thanksgiving holiday, but we will be back next week with more editions of The Daily Doug, and we will see you then on another edition of The... <laughs> I got all the way to the end and messed up my, my outro. We will see you next time on another edition of The Daily Doug.